Welcome back to our live stream here at Griffith Observatory, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. David Reitzel, and with me is Patrick So, And we are just a few minutes away from first umbral contact, where we'll see the first truly dark bite of the moon taken out. Right now, everything we're seeing is penumbral um, shadow. So, Patrick, what's the difference between those? Well, right now, the shadow that you're seeing is the penumbral, which is the lighter part of the Earth's shadow. And then there's a darker portion, uh, which the moon will move into in just a few minutes. And as the moon begins to move uh, into the umbral, or the darkest part of the Earth's shadow, uh, we'll uh, see a slight reddening on the uh, left uh, edge of the moon. Right now it's kind of dark uh, because uh, we're in the deepest part of the penumbral shadow. But um, the eclipse will begin in earnest in just a few minutes. That's true. Uh, here earlier tonight, we had a lot of clouds and we could barely see the moon, but things have cleared up quite nicely. We still have some high cirrus, but our telescope is able to punch right through that and get you this view of the moon you're all enjoying here, and hopefully it'll hold out throughout our eclipse. We're expecting totality to begin, oh, it's a, it's a little, about 45 minutes after this first umbral contact. So that happens at 8, 841 is the time that totality begins. So this first umbral part of the eclipse starts at 733, which we're just a, c a couple of minutes away from now. And then it'll be greatest eclipse. Well, at 9, 841, it'll be totality, and then greatest eclipse at 912 p.m. And then following that, totality will end at 943. So we have a little over an hour, an hour of two minutes of totality to enjoy. So these are not like solar eclipses, where the totality is very short and only a couple of minutes long. So don't worry about being outside right at the right time for this. You have quite a while to enjoy it. Um, throughout the night tonight, we've been bringing you music from our planetarium shows, so I hope you've been enjoying that. Um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to uh, contact us and let us know. Uh, here at Griffith Observatory, we run all sorts of programming. We hope you're tuned in to our YouTube channel or perhaps our live stream channel. On our YouTube channel, you can find clips of our show, All Space Considered, and other guests that have given lectures, as well as videos from our previous lunar eclipses. So all sorts of things to enjoy from Griffith Observatory. All right, now we're getting very close to the first umbral contact. This penumbral part has gotten very dark on the moon. Um, it's looking quite dark. So I hope we are getting very close here to it. We are less than a minute away from our first umbral contact. So we will wait here for it. And folks, we are bringing all of these images live from Griffith Observatory itself with our telescopes here and our staff. So we are at 733 right now. So we have had our first umbral contact. And as you can see, that lower left corner of the moon on your image is very, very dark. And we'll start to see sort of the reddish color start to creep from that corner of the moon or that round corner, corner of a round object, but that edge of the moon moving in towards the center of it and getting and getting darker and darker, which allows you to see that coppery red color. Now, Patrick, where does that red color come from? Actually, that's the, uh, the red color comes from uh, the uh, atmosphere, actually, from the sunlight that um, is uh, refracted around the atmosphere of the Earth. So if you imagine that you were standing on the moon and uh, you could look back at Earth, you would see this brilliant reddish orange uh, ring around the moon, around the sun, uh, around the Earth, excuse me. And that comes from all the world's sunrises and sunsets at the same time. And all that light, that reddish light is falling upon the moon in the umbral part of the shadow. And uh, that's what we'll see. Now, how dark and how reddish uh, the moon will be, um, that's, uh, we're going to uh, see that in the next uh, you know, few, um, like about an hour or so. And um, it depends on how much, uh, how many clouds and how transparent the atmosphere is. If the atmosphere is transparent and has a little bit of dust, then uh, the moon will look a bright orange. If there's a lot of dust uh, from volcanic eruptions and, and storms, then the moon will look appreciably darker. So um, right now we look and, and we wait in anticipation to see uh, what the final coloration of the moon will look like tonight. So that will be a treat for all of us to watch in the next uh, uh, tens of minutes. Yeah, we're a little more than an hour away from totality, but we'll be able to see some of that reddish color well before then, we hope. Now, an interesting point is you said if you were on the moon looking at the Earth, 
you would see a total solar eclipse. It's the same things are kind of reversed because the sun would actually be behind the earth at this point. So um, if you were on the moon looking, you could do that. Now, unfortunately, there's nobody on the moon right now. Oh, there is a Chinese rover that landed, but it landed on the far side of the moon. So it's actually in the opposite side of what we're seeing. So it doesn't get to see the eclipse at all, unfortunately. Um, there was a spacecraft that actually managed to see that, one of the U.S. spacecrafts. If you Google that, I think it was um, one of the surveyor crafts. I think captured that if I remember right. Um, right now, folks, what you're seeing is us adjusting uh, our contrast and adjusting the brightness of the image here. Uh, essentially, our, our exposure time, we're changing to bring out that edge. And you can see that just that tiny bite that's been taken out of the full moon. And that's the umbra that we're really bringing out. We made an adjustment to our exposure time to bring that out for you. So you can see on that lower left part, that circular umbral shadow of the Earth. So anyway, it'd be very interesting if you were in that dark point looking up, you would see a total solar eclipse, whereas if you were elsewhere on the, f on the face of the moon, you'd be seeing a partial solar eclipse. And that's really the difference between the penumbra and the umbra. In the umbra, the Earth is completely blocking the sun out. And in the penumbra, if you were standing there looking up, the Earth would only partially be blocking out the sun. Well, at this point, I think we'll go back to our music and you can enjoy watching this umbra shadow creep across the moon for the next more than an hour before totality. Uh, we'll come back in and check in with you and let you know how things are going from Griffith Observatory. Thank you all for joining us.